Hello everyone. So today we're going to have a new Anthropology of Japan lecture and I'm not going to tell you the topic. Actually, I want you to listen and I want you to tell me what the topic is. Today, I'm sure you did guess it, we're going to go over Power Rangers. I'm going to do a lecture. Let me share my screen. Let me get out of here. Over here. Let me get myself out. And today, we're going to go over Power Rangers. Let me go to the front. All right. All right. So today, we're going to go over Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Some of you have probably dressed up in Halloween as a, as a costume. I'm sure some of you were different costumes, okay? All right, so today we're gonna go over a chapter in, in the book, Millennial Monsters, about Power Rangers. The book is actually by Anne Allison, a Japanese anthropologist. She is a cultural anthropologist. She got her PhD at the University of Chicago in 1970, it's 1986. She studies political economy, post-industrial Japan, sexuality, motherhood, pornography, and labor. Her books are Nightwork by University of Chicago, 1994, Millennial Monsters, which you're reading on chapter out of, University of California, 2006, and Precarious Japan. Now, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is the first crossover heroes from Japan. So did you guys know when you're six years old, if I asked you on the Saturdays that you watched uh, Power Rangers? I know not all of you watched, but I have to say a lot of you did watch. And did you guys know, hmm, I'm totally understanding Japanese cultural myths. And also, I'm understanding post-industrial Japan. Well, guess what, six-year-old? You were. So actually, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers actually represented a lot of Japanese culture. Number one, Japan has this huge superhero myth that's timeless and universal, right? And that's very Japanese and also global. Another thing is these superheroes that you love, that you dressed up as, it, as Halloween costumes, were actually representing imaginary Japan. So again, shocking. I know some of you are very shocked right now. And the third thing is that you're watching, it had actually a post-war Japan animal siblings, a blending. So did you guys know that actually Power Rangers is actually banned in some Christian schools as well as some Catholic schools? Because they sort of understand that it had some sort of morphing evolution. Japan is very into evolution. They certainly believe in it. So again, these are animalistic uh, Japanese religious beliefs. For some, shocking. For not, for others, such as my other students, uh, actually, your religion has animalistic beliefs. Now, as anthropologists or anthropology majors, we have to understand why it's popular. Like, like how you, I have to drill in. Why is how you so popular? You have to understand, right? Well, this is called kawaii, and kawaii is super popular because it's popular Japanese culture, and it became popular because of, one, global capitalism, media, okay, globalization that is enabling all these things to float around all the world, okay, that's definitely a reason why it's so popular. Two, a Power Rangers became the embodiment of post-Fortis and post 
modernist aesthetic in the realm of, of uh, children's mass toys. Now you're probably wondering, what is post Fortis? Well, there was this guy, his name was Henry Ford, and he would build factories of cars, right? So in the, he was a very famous a car maker, and he made the same car over and over and over again. Everyone had the same part, identical, kind of like Barbies, right? And guess what, guys? These Power Rangers are interchangeable. They're different. They can be customizable. Very different, right? So that's post fortis after the kind of the mass same. So that's what post fortis means, okay? So the quest, second question I get a lot from students is, what is postmodern aesthetic? Well, if you're listening uh, or, or watching this on an iPhone or your computer, guess what? Look at it. Look how the silver, look how it's, it has no kind of like decoration, right? Well, that's postmodern aesthetic, right? Think of like those like highly Victorian um, like uh, decorations, like every inch of the wall has something on it and it's completely embroidered every inch. Ah, some people like that. Um, I'm, I'm more of a minimalist myself, but guess what guys? If you have your computer in front of you or your phone and you're watching it, guess what? You're also a postmodernist. I don't want to get too much into postmodern aesthetic because there's over 2,000 definitions of postmodernism, so I don't want to get into it, but one definition is kind of a minimalist, kind of a silver, particularly uh, the computer and your phone that you have in front of you. Now, Japanese toys are different from Barbie or just traditional American toys. Why? Okay. One, each unit is replaceable. Isn't that true? Can you change the, the cap of that pink ranger you see with another cap of a yellow ranger? Can't you change the outfit? Can't you change the even the body shape, right? Like let's think of Voltron or something, right? So that's very different and innovative that Japanese culture has given us, right? B, Japan has the highest robotic machineries in the world. I love Japan. I really want you guys to go to Japan. It's magical. Please go to Japan Disney. Um, it's got to be your number one, your bucket list. Make it so. Also, um, something about Japan is there is a fetish of the, of the Japanese kind of like metal body. And again, think about it. You have a phone. You have a computer. You also fetishize kind of a Japanese metal body. But this has been around in Japan for a long, long time. Japan has this thing where they, when they have like really great things, they hold it to themselves and after they get tired of it, then they show it to the world. So this is very Japanese, guys. All right. Rangers do the States. Originally rejected for American audience because it was considered cheesy, right? You know, I was in high school when it came out. My little cousins were six, and so they're, like, loving it, okay? Uh, but I kind of thought, like, what is this thing? Like, the words don't even match the mouth. And I, I kind of thought, wow, weird. I was really into Robotech, Speed Racer, really cool things. But when I think about it, actually, those uh, mouths didn't match either. But anyway, I loved it. So Margaret Loesch of Fox Kids TV show actually approves of the changes, these two changes. Now, I want you to think about, it's a Japanese show. Everything's said in Japan. It's spoken in Japan. What are the two changes? You can pause and write it down if you want. Number one, the two changes. Well, the name change. The names were changed into Japanese names because um, they're obviously into English names because they're obviously all Japanese names. Also, they reshot or re all the scenes of pre-morphed Japanese actors to American actors. And after five weeks, it becomes a huge hit. Now, take out a sheet of paper and divide it in half. I would like you to pause it now for 10 minutes. On one half, I want you to write down all the Japanese products that you use in your house and that you use also including toys. All of them from your Mac, everything down the line, okay? All the Japanese products you use. Nintendo, etc. Other side, I want you to write about your first kind of impressions or your first interaction and how old were you uh, when you first engaged with Japanese products. A lot of people will say, you know, it was Saturday morning. So take a five minute break, 10 minute break. And on the other side, write, write like what, what was your first reaction? So pause it. All right, so thanks for coming back after your pause. Um, now we're gonna look at the Japanese products. Well, you know, this Pokemon, this 
Power Rangers, it kind of ushers and predates other hugely successful Japanese products, such as Speed Racer, Robotech, Voltron, Bakugan, DS, uh, Game Boy, Switch. Really popular. I always see my students playing with it. It really, seems really fun. Of course, you know, after I did those lecture ones, I had these students rush to me. They rushed to me because they showed me their present Game Boys that they would bring to class. I'm like, oh my goodness, you're 25 and you're still playing it. Wonderful. And they're like telling me there's wonderful stories. And a lot of them recently in class have been rushing up to me and showing their Switch. And I was like, my God, amazing. Really great. Wonderful Japanese products. And apparently there's so many Japanese toys out there. They're new. And the movies that you talk about, it just sounds so wonderful. All right, so my last slide, is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers still popular? Hmm, I'd have to ask you guys that. All right, that's the end. And please uh, email me any questions at jenbon at mail.fresnostate.edu. Do not email me to Canvas, please. And that's it. And I hope to stop the share. I hope to see you soon. All right.